Smell that? It's time for a swing dance reaction video. No. 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 Yeah! Greetings and salutations. Welcome to Street Smart Swing. My name is Jamin Jackson, also known as the Galactic Swing Dance Umpire! <laughs> and I am super excited to be scrutinizing another swing-themed video today. But first, make sure you subscribe and headbutt that notification button so you never miss a Swing Dance reaction video ever again. Today, we're going to be looking at some old Lindy Hop footage of Frankie Manning, Don Hampton, and Chaz Young. This is going to be interesting to me because I feel like I've seen most of the vintage clips that are out there, and anything Thing that's new from Frankie Manning or even old new footage which is exactly what this is definitely merits my attention do not let your hearts be troubled I will be telling you the absolute truth about my feelings of this footage so if you are someone who gets triggered by the truth this is not the place for you all right what am I gonna see okay just right into it yes <laughs> I wonder how old he is in this footage. Oh, this is so great. A lot of these classic moves, he's the one that either made up or refined. And Don Hampton, come on now. I think I've seen this male dancer somewhere. I'm not quite sure. Um, let me know who this is in the comment section because that's who I think it is. He's been around for a long time now. Jazz. I don't get a chance to see much swing dance footage of Chaz around this age. So this is kind of special just to see a little bit of how he would style. I mean, obviously he looks a lot like Frankie, but there are some nuanced differences here. Yeah, Frank. <laughs> so you don't have a partner. All right, let's do it. <laughs> oh, Frankie and Don, this is great. This is great. You know, it's unfortunate. I I never <laughs> I never had the chance to meet Frankie. I came like one year after he was uh, passed away and the only person out of this group that I really got a chance to connect with was uh, uh, Don Hampton. Oh. Come on with that shib sham. Never gets old.
Yes. 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 Okay. Um. Oh, we got more footage. Okay. Looks like uh, Chaz is gonna break down and do some tap. Yes. There's so much you can do when your body is healthy and younger. It's 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 amazing to see uh, Chaz at this level because I normally get a chance to see him when he's at the age now. And this is much this is older. This is like what 1995. I was like 15 or 16. You know, listening to uh, MC Hammer when he uh, went from his New Jack Swing to like Gangsta era. Right, it was a weird time, and so I, I probably would have been interested in any of this other than the tap dancing because I was familiar with that. But um, I think I find it quite interesting watching this footage. I get so many mixed emotions when I see I see some of the people who are older than me. I don't want to say old timers because at some point I'm going to be older, and then people will just say old timers. And then it just validates everything I do because I'm an old timer, an OG. We used to call him that in hip hop. Um, I, I I liked what I saw here. Let me first talk about the Lindy Hop stuff. You know, when I watch Frankie dance, it's a real blessing because I get a, I get a chance to see a lot of Frankie Manning's movements echoed currently in the present day. I see a lot of dancers doing. Um, his movements, but they don't really know that they're his movements um, or his styling of a lot of the movements. I find that fascinating. I find that fascinating for, for me, at least, you know, as someone who's really interested in, in the dance, I'm interested in the history and I'm interested in it being like a, taking it seriously, a professional thing. And I look at his moves and I go, oh, yeah, he's the one that does a lot of the styling stuff that a lot of our popular dancers today are doing. And uh a lot of people don't make that connection, not to hate on anybody, to say, oh, they're just you know ripping off Frankie Manning's moves. No, they're actually honoring Frankie Manning and his movements. And I like that. I like that. Um, the thing I don't like is just that nobody really knows. Not that many people know like what moves he contributed to the art form. You know, I'm, a, I'm an originalist. That's my view on things. And my reasons for being an originalist is that if... We have some type of foundation that we are championing, any kind of thing that we want to glorify and say, yes, this is what I stand for. It, it's on the backs of something that is already established or it is a new foundation. So in my mind, I didn't make up swing dancing. I didn't. But the, the precedent for me has already been set since I came into swing dancing as someone who was an already professional dancer. So my perspective on being an originalist was incredibly important. I went into hip hop thinking that way. I went into ballet thinking that way. I went into uh, musical theater thinking that way. I was always reaching back to see what were the precedents that were set that can be built upon. And so, you know, when I look at this footage, I, I, see, I see history. I see a lot of valuable history here. I see a professional dance that is accessible to people and to everyone. I see an accessible professional dance that makes adjustments when you don't have everything perfect. That's how I look at role swapping. I don't look at it as the foundation. That's not what um, the original dancers did. 
I'm not talking about the second generation and third generation. They had their reasons for doing it, and it isn't the same reasons that people do it today. Let me, let me make that clear. So when I look at that, I look at the adaptability of swing dancing to work with what you have. There's a huge life lesson there. If you don't have your dance partner, like Al Menz and Leon James sometimes, they're in the middle of the war times. They worked with each other. Do the best you can. You got to eat, man. So they danced together. That's what Norma said in her book. And they went out there and they did their thing. But a piece of me hurts. Because when I watch their footage, I don't see, oh, look, they're trend setting. Oh, they're swapping roles. Look how innovative they are. Look how forward thinking they are. Look how whatever political party they are. No, I don't see that. I see blackface. I see, I see them doing what they can to make a living because they have to. They don't have uh, the, the ability right then to show what it is that they do at its highest level. So they're working together to do the best they can. And they're doing it in front of audiences who typically like to see stuff like that. It's entertainment for them. And they get to laugh. <laughs> That's so silly. That's so great. <laughs> and they clap and they laugh at them being goofy and silly and showing a fractured version of, of what they did in its glory. And so I hurt when I see... And I see that. I don't like to get out in public and show people Lindy Hop for the very first time a version that I want just because it's beneficial for me politically right now. I don't like doing that. I, I like to say, what is the best way to do it? And there's the precedent's already been set. So when I see that, I see what Frankie's doing and I see what Don is doing. I don't see it in the same spirit as a lot of the dancers today. I see it as, hey, this is what we did. This is what we had to do to adjust. This is what we did to have to um, make people laugh and to, and to connect with us. And it's kind of the same feelings I get with blackface. It's like, hey, it's a gimmick. It's, he's not really the woman, but he's pretending to be the woman to get a laugh. And she's not really the guy, but she's pretending to be the guy to, to get a laugh. That's okay. Some people do it that way. And that's, that's where they were at. But I don't look at it that way. I don't look at it that way. For me, I look at it as a professional dancer and I look and I say, what is this dance in its glory? Who, who, if I'm showing Lindy Hop to the masses for the very first time, I'm not going to be doing that. I'm not going to present um, some version of it that looks like, you know, blackface in my mind. It would be offensive to me if I was someone in the audience watching it and I saw people doing that. And I go, well, come on, man, that's... That's fun that they're doing that, but that's not the dance. You're, you're, you're trying to impress someone like me. I'm a hip hop dancer. I'm taking this dead seriously. And I got the guy out there, you know, doing his thing. So I'm an originalist. So when I see this, I look at what they did at the very beginning that made New Yorkers and made the world subsequently pay attention to this art form so that now we're here today because of that. Not because of what we want out of it, but because of what they did. So when I look at Frankie, when I look at Don, I look at Chaz, they, they represent a piece of history that is so critically important to me personally. I say I would not be here. I say the Swedes would not be here. And I say without the Swedes, there'd be no swing in the modern time. So there's lessons that I learned from this. You, you have to keep reaching to say, what is it that they did that was so wonderful? Maybe there's something good that we can learn from that. Maybe I can humble myself and, and reach out and ask these people who, who may reject me to teach me something from their world. Let me enter their world without me leaving my own and get something of value from them. Don't let me impose my world onto someone else's thing. And if they don't like it, if they don't want me to do that, I get to call them names and uh, boycott them and do what I want. That doesn't really say we value someone else's thing. And so I learn a lot from every person that has uh, contributed to the art form, either positive or negative. You only hear the positive stuff that I learned. <laughs> the negative stuff, I internalize it and I try not to repeat. But I will tell you, this footage was very good. I think this footage is important. Um, it was great to see Chaz and his, his, his younger version of who he was. I could really hear those clean rhythms and and what, what he was wanting to do was much more easily understood when you, your body, you can bend your knees a little bit and your hips are not as sore. And, and I, I think I look at my life and I look at this footage and I go, you know, someday, hopefully if I'm blessed to live that long, 
I'm going to be older and the intentionality that's built up inside of me with the ideas may not be able to be transferred the way I really desire it. And, you know, all I can get is maybe a blank stare from the audience. But inside, I'm boiling over with joy and um, just inspiration. But anyway, that's how I feel about this footage. It's good. Um, it reminds me of the pain of loss of the people who were that second generation of dancers during that wartime. That, that's, it's painful. I can't imagine what they went through to live in a time where people were segregated over the most ridiculous things. And the only way that they can make their living is to keep doing the thing that got so much recognition. But they had to do it in a way that wasn't fully the full expression of it. And then it's like people cheered and laughed, but you were still in a segregated world. And so you're kind of like, look at the monkeys dancing. Ha ha ha, it's great. You know, and so my heart hurts on that because I would hate uh, for anything that I create to be represented in a way that is not truly what it is at its core, at its pinnacle, you know. And uh, so I, I empathize with the dancers when I see them kind of swap roles in that way. I kind of get the feeling of that. It's a vestige of that pain that I feel uh, knowing uh, that their life was different than mine. We live in a blessed time, guys. So that's what I get when I watch this. Uh, I also liked seeing Dawn. She was wonderful. I remember one time I was at an event <clears throat> and uh, I like to dye, I like to straighten my hair. People always ask me, is your hair like this? What is, what's going on? Why do you make your hair like that? And uh, I liked it. I always used to do it because my uncle, when I was a kid, he used to make his hair wavy and it was back in the 80s and I didn't understand like, I, why does his hair look different than mine? Mine's curlier. And so I used to watch a lot of the old clips and I would want my hair to look like those guys in the old clips. Uh, their hair was straightened out. And at the time when I got into swing dancing, I had like a nice little afro. It was kind of this Lenny Kravitz look. And I remember going to this event and uh, meeting some people and just hanging out. And then I thought, you know what? Maybe I should straighten my hair and go back to that, you know, that vintage style. And I just remember uh, showing back up. I think it was like the Sunday workshop and I straightened my hair. And one of the ladies was like, glad you straightened your hair. It's just so nappy. <laughs> you know, that's what she said. And of course, I didn't take offense. I just thought, you know, maybe she's right. My hair was nappy. But the thing is, is I like my hair. I like it either straight. I like it curly. But I could tell Don was offended by that. And she just kind of looked at this lady like, you know what? You can just... And she looked at me to think that, are you offended by that? And I, and I wasn't offended. And so I think from that moment, we had this like deeper connection. Like it was just understood that we experienced something that uh, not a lot of other people experienced, but she was surprised by my reluctance to really kind of be upset about that. You know, I, I was true. My hair was uh, curly, but maybe the lady didn't have the right attitude in saying that. And so... When I see Dawn, every time I think about those private moments uh, that I had with her, and uh, when I think about Chaz, I think about you know being in the hotel lobbies of uh, different events, and you know hanging out before the event starts, and he's at the bar, and we're all just kind of hang hanging out and chilling, and just talking, dance, and geeking out a little bit, and you know I, I think I think that's the part that I'm kind of missing right now in the scene. I'm, I'm missing people who are dead serious about this art form who love it enough to talk about it and, and to have a healthy perspective on it, not to exploit it, not to just take what you want out of it. I, I, I see more of that than I do see those people with the, the, the attitude of these dancers who are part of it and they want to just simply share their part. They want to share their, um, their contribution to others. So anyway, that's how I feel. And you guys know me. I'm going to tell you the truth. If you're going to get anything from me, I'm going to tell you the truth, even if it stings, even if it makes you uncomfortable, and even if it's not really beneficial to me, because my opinion has nothing to do with the truth. Hopefully it can align with the truth, but the truth is more important than my opinion. So let me hear what you guys think about this footage. And uh, I'll tell you, it was pretty fun. Big shout out to Nala Pick. I think this is the Nala from Korea. I think it is. I think it is. I really like his dance. I don't get a chance to see him dance enough. You know, I just saw him like, you know, those bigger events, you know, judging and stuff. So um, I never had a chance to kind of like see him him dance. But a big shout out to Nala for this. Thanks for making this footage. 
think it's really cool that we can have the technology to share ideas like this and talk about these ideas. So anyway, let me know what you guys think about this footage and make sure you subscribe to Nala Pick 9. Uh, I think he's got a YouTube channel. Um, subscribe to that. If you guys have not yet gotten to swing dancing, check out my fundamentals membership. It is basically a pathway to help you circumvent a lot of unnecessary entanglements. Swing dancing does not take a long time to get good at, and I, I, I prove it. I prove it to you because I got good within nine months and started traveling internationally within a year, and I haven't stopped. You know, I went over to 200 different places traveling and teaching. But I had to build a theory that actually was cohesive, consistent, and applicable to slow, medium, and fast tempos. You should be able to use the same theme because we're dealing with physics here. So as much as I, I speak about it in a complicated way, no, I've basically helped you understand that Lindy Hop can be simple, but the hard part is that you're going to have to apply those simple things on the social dance floor. The great part is you're going to be able to fix yourself without always needing a teacher. So take a uh, take a look at my fundamentals membership uh, below. If you guys want to get some inspiration, some of my artwork, the stuff that I work on, we got a home studio next door, and every Monday and Tuesday we're posting new content for our street smart swing community online. So check out some of those free courses that will really inspire you to help you get to the next level. With that being said, uh, let me know what you guys thought about this video in the comment section. If I don't see uh, your comments below, hopefully I get a chance to see some of you all in my class online. Take care.